G'day sports lovers, it's time for another episode of Snapping with the Stars. We've got another very exciting guest to introduce you to today. She's a star of the track and here's what she did on the weekend. Now we come into the home straight, Jess Thorn is leading, Morgan Mitchell fighting very hard. Everyone's cheering around her but here comes Morgan Mitchell, the long striding Victorian. She's trying to catch up, holding on, Morgan Mitchell just getting in front and she's going to take it out, the national champion. This is very, very fast. 87. We might have to wait for the result here. 52.20 is the Olympic qualifier. Oh, Jess I'm Thornton so excited close. about that race. That was fantastic. That's right, folks. Please go absolutely wild for the one and only Morgan Mitchell. So, Morgan, thanks so much for coming on the show. And can you explain to everyone what it was like to run that last 100 metres to bag another national title and book your ticket to Rio? When my baby... Hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, let's get into it. That last hundred. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was pretty nervous. I hey? uh, remember coming off that bend and seeing Jess Thornton still uh, <laughs> ticking over. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, but I mean, yeah, cross the line first. I was super happy, super excited. Yeah, to get the auto qualifier was just a relief, more than anything, but um, it still hasn't sunk in yet, so yeah. No, it was, just, it was a good weekend all in all, and yeah, happy for all the girls, and I'm hoping Rio will be a good one. Righto, so what's the biggest difference between the national title you won this year and the one you took out in Melbourne two years ago? Biggest difference um, would have to be, I guess, two years ago I had, was new to the sport, or fairly new, um, uh, I was also sick and tired of running 53.5. I'd done that about six or seven races in a row before the, the Nationals. And it got to that day and I thought, oh, I've got nothing to lose. Um, just listen to the coach, go out a little bit harder than I have been and don't run 53.5. <laughs> um, pulled it off, ran the 52.2, which was a Com Games qualifier. Um, and I was super happy, like I was not expecting that. Uh, this year, though, I put in a lot more work. Um, and, and I guess... Uh, being Olympic here, I just did not want to give up that number one spot, getting the automatic selection and doing everything right to ensure I'd be on the team for Rio. Well, oh, little road to Rio in uh, Woolworths. What do you know? Neck minute. Bam. G'day Morgan, it's Mossy here. Hey, everyone out there, if you want to ask Morgan a question, just snap us right now. My question to you is about netball. Here you are, Victorian netball champion. You could have gone all the way there. Why did you choose athletics over netball? I chose athletics over netball because going to the Olympics was a childhood dream of mine. Um, and yeah, you couldn't do it for netball, so hmm, that's why. Well, we're absolutely stoked that you made the right choice and remained in athletics. Now, my last question for you before we head on to ask Morgan questions from the fans. Is you've been a mainstay in the 4x400 metre relay team for the last couple of years. Of all the girls, who's the biggest character and why? Oh, who's the biggest character? <laughs> I'd have to give it maybe to Annie. Um, she loves a good game of truth or dare. <laughs> Not going to mention any of the dares, but pretty funny. Well, it just so happens that we've got Annalise Ruby on the show tomorrow, so we'll find out bit about her truth or dare. So the first question on Ask Morgan is from Rach O'Brien. She asks about your training. Um, what goes on during a normal training week for you? Today is a gym session in the morning and then boxing and swimming in the afternoon. Uh, Tuesday is just speed endurance on the track. Uh, uh, Wednesday is technique work, skills and drills, plus a bit of plyo. Uh, Thursday speed and a bit of gym as well on the same day. Uh, Friday is usually a day of just rest, but I, you know, hit up the Pilates or whatever and maybe go for a swim. Um, Saturday is usually comp, and, and Sunday we are usually running hills at the MCG. Not fun at all, that is for sure. Um, but yeah, nah, that's my week, so it's pretty easy. Okay, so the next few questions are all about food. According to your Instagram, uh, you are a proud vegan. So Laslaz44 says, what's your favorite vegan restaurant in Melbourne? Canoe67 says, what's your favorite food? 
And another one, which I can't remember who it was, said, what's it like not being able to eat proper food? Proper food? What's proper food? Okay, so I'm actually at my favourite vegan restaurant. It is the one and only veggie bar. So, so good. Um, they've got vegan and vegetarian options and gluten-free as well. Yeah. Um, Favourite food at the moment would have to be vegan dumplings. Um, yeah, I cannot get enough. It's always changing though, whenever I find something new, there's always a new favourite food. And whoever asks what's it like not eating proper food, I'm pretty sure I do eat proper food. Um, I think it was another company in Berlin. The term vegan just means to eliminate all animal derived products from your diet. So meat, dairy, you know, all that stuff. Um, yeah, we've been vegan for a year and a half and have a look at that. Here we have some vegan desserts for you guys. Who said vegans couldn't eat desserts? Tell me. So while we're talking about food, I want to know what was the celebration meal after you qualified for your first ever Olympic Games? Uh, the celebration meal was two large buckets of chips and some veggie dumplings. And Angus Dodd asks, what does your diet consist of on race day? Uh, race day I have two pieces of toast with banana, maple syrup and peanut butter um, and a massive green smoothie. Uh, then I'll have a tofu salad for lunch. I like to keep that one a little bit light. And then on my way to the track I'll snack on green apples. And just before I begin my warm up I'll snack on four to five dates. Nothing like a uh, massive punch in the face from sugar. Right, a couple more fan questions coming through here. Brooklyn wants to know, what's been the hardest part of your journey so far? Hopefully not being chased by the cops. And Sydney wants to know, what's been your favourite race of your career so far? The hardest part of my journey sounds pretty silly, but it's probably sitting in traffic. Melbourne traffic is so bad. Every day before training, I would literally be sitting in traffic for about an hour and a half, and I did that day in, day out, basically, because I was a fair while away from the city, so yeah. Get niggles here and there from it. Um, I mean, people would think, you know, just suck it up, but it was actually quite tough just having to sit down before you meant to get into a hard session. The race so far is probably running sub-52 at the Vic Champs. I've got a few favourites, but that's one of them, just because we had worked so hard to get there. And what better way to honour the toughest part of your journey so far, and indeed the Melbourne traffic, than by being in the car right now. Alright, I want to talk about people that have influenced your career, and like so many Australian sporting fans, I understand this person and this moment inspired you greatly. So if you can, tell us your memories of that moment, how much of an impact Cathy Freeman has been on your career as a 400 runner, and what it's been like to have Cathy Freeman as a mentor in recent times. Yeah, um, Kath obviously has been a big part for the past two years. Um, where was I when that race was on? I was in prep. <laughs> that inspired me the most was not the fact that it was athletics related, I think it was just the fact that she'd won. Like, she won an Olympic medal, that's what I wanted, no matter if I had to do weightlifting to get there. Yeah, she's uh, been an amazing mentor. Um, I mean, it's more off the track than anything, like I have a lot going on and no matter what, no matter what, she's um, always been there for me. It, like, I mean, she does help out with the racing and the nerves and, you know, like I love just asking her about her experience. But it's all those um, smaller issues off the track that I need help with. That she just she knows what to say, and then I mean it gets to the track work, and that's easy, you know. Um, other people that have influenced me, I think my sisters are a big influence. We are more like brothers, actually. We fight all the time. Everything is a competition. <laughs> There's always someone crying over nothing. But yeah, we've always pushed each other to see who can be the best at whatever it was, and I think that's actually kind of transferred into my track, which is pretty good. I guess I thank them for it. Whatever. <laughs> Other sporting heroes like um, a lot of UFC fighters, John Jones, McGregor, Rousey, St. Pierre. I think it's just anyone that's willing to work hard. All right, so we better let Morgan get back to packing her bags for Rio. Uh, it's only four months to go now, so only around the corner. 
And a huge thanks to all of you for sending in your questions for Morgan Mitchell tonight. Sorry we haven't got to them all. What you can do is follow Morgan's Snapchat and ask her yourself. And don't forget you can hit Morgan up on Instagram as well. She's literally just ticked over 10,000 followers. She's a superstar and you can follow her right now. But we can't finish without asking the question we ask all our guests on Snapping with the Stars. If you could race anyone in the world, past or present, who would it be and where would it be? Where would the track be? It had to be a track athlete, I would actually have to go for Dababa. 1500, that would be sick. I not mind uh, going back to the Bahamas for that one. <laughs> thank you everyone for your questions and thank you for supporting me so far. Uh, Mossy and Robo, thanks for having me and I'm hoping we can do this again sometime.